everybody, it's Ron McCulloch. I'm a consultant podiatric surgeon, and as many of you will know by now, I specialize in the condition of Morton's neuroma, and our center offers a, a number of, uh, of treatments. It's one of the most advanced centers around for the management of this condition. So um, after my uh, shorter video on when perhaps not to have a steroid injection for Morton's neuroma, I had some requests and some more questions from patients about whether I could do a bit of a deeper dive about the risks of steroid injections so that patients can really make a really good informed opinion about whether they want to go down that road or not. Um, I should say that this is not trying to scare anybody from having steroid injections. On the whole, a single injection in a healthy patient is uh, generally very rarely an issue. There are examples when uh, one needs to be more careful because of the specific situation of the patient, and that's obviously something I'm going to talk about in detail now. But I have performed many thousands of injections for different conditions, and these conditions range. And in some cases, I will still do an injection uh, for a neuroma, but only really if there's a very florid bursitis that requires that approach. Now, needless to say, the uh, success of the injection isn't just down to specific circumstances or generalized risk of complication, which can happen to anybody. It's also very much about uh, technique, about using meticulous technique, obviously about using ultrasound-guided technique rather than an uh, anatomical or blind technique, which is far more likely, in my view, to give rise to, to issues and complications and will reduce the effect of the injection. Um, and also the ability of the practitioner to critique their technique and see maybe why one injection has been more successful than another. So for all those reasons, um, the risk goes down if you use good technique under ultrasound and obviously if you're very meticulous with your tissue handling and the sterility aspect of things. But providing you with this information is really all part of informed consent. Um, I think it's very important for any patient who has a steroid injection to fully understand the implications and possible complications and obviously then you go into such a procedure with your eyes wide open and if you are unlucky and you're high lucky to have a complication then um, at least you, you, you know that you've been properly informed and that's why I think this is very very important. So the first complication that I would like to discuss is nerve damage. Um, this relates really more to the needle than to the steroid. Uh, what can happen is if you don't do an ultrasound guided technique or if you do a poor technique, then the needle can be driven deep inside the nerve and that can cause what's called a neuropraxia, which is basically uh, damage um, to the nerve itself. And then if you also inject steroid into that damaged nerve, then it can actually make the situation worse. Obviously, the way to avoid that is to use ultrasound and also to just make sure that the technique is excellent and that um, you, know, you inject around the nerve, uh, the perineural tissues, the bursa, but not deep inside the nerve, because in my view, that will cause a degree um, of damage. So the second thing is uh, tendon uh, damage or rupture. Now, you may say, well, what has that to do with Morton's neuroma? But obviously, if the technique isn't done properly, and I have seen this in the past, then steroid can infiltrate around tendons. And if these are perhaps slightly diseased or not in the best state anyway, then it can result in a rupture of the tendon. So this, again, is more about technique. If you use a good technique, it's very unlikely you're going to be damaging a tendon, but it is possible. And uh, if you're unlucky enough to suddenly find that after a steroid injection, there is some deformity of the toe, then that is one of the possibilities, although there are others which I will go through. Another complication is just generally pain at the injection site, and that's really going to be covered in a number of other complications because obviously that pain could be the result of an infection, it could be the result of uh, a needle puncturing a vein, it could simply be that the steroid itself has caused what's called a steroid flare. So pain really is subdivided into other areas which we will go through subsequently. Another possible complication is excessive swelling in the area when the injection has taken place. This again relates to the previous comments that I made. If you get infection, you'll get more swelling, but sometimes and rarely the injection can also interfere with the normal lymphatics between the toes. And I have seen excessive swelling from uh, an injection as a consequence of this. So it is quite rare, but if you see uh, excessive swelling, just be aware that it could be to do with the uh, circulatory states in the area. And also, of course, if you're already prone to varicose veins and your circulation is not great, then these risks will increase. The next one is uh, accidental puncture of a vein. Now, as the needle goes through into the tissues, it is possible to puncture a vein, and it's not always possible to avoid that because it's simply 
quite often invisible. And then as you go through it, it will suddenly distend and become more obvious. And the main thing is to apply pressure to the vein. And it's usually a very temporary problem. However, in rare instances, you can get something called phlebitis where the vein becomes inflamed and painful and that that may require anti-inflammatories and other treatments. Another possible complication is broadly known as atrophy and steroids can cause atrophy. What does that mean? It means wastage. They can affect the collagen integrity. These are the fibers that make up skin. They can affect their integrity and as a consequence, uh, the skin can thin. But also, um, steroid has the effect of breaking down fat. So what you also find is that you'll get dimpling if you have too many steroids or the injection perhaps was too superficial. And that same uh, atrophy or fat can cause a lack of natural padding underneath the foot. And as a consequence, it can feel like you're walking on bone. So this is another reason why we avoid too many steroids. Uh, one, it's unlikely to be caused unless you've already got some atrophy. Some people have got very bony feet. And in these feet, and this has been alluded to in one of my other videos, I wouldn't do a steroid injection for that reason. Incidentally, uh, perhaps atrophy can also occur in relation to bone. So steroid has been associated with osteoporosis and it can actually compromise the quality of a joint. Now, again, you may wonder what's the relevance to this with Morton's neuroma, where you're actually injecting a nerve, but there is a connection insofar as that if some of the steroid seeps into the joint, if the technique is not done perfectly, and for that reason, there is some steroid entering the joint, if the patient already has some joint damage, you could get some softening of the bone, osteoporosis as a consequence, and you can also get some speeding off of the arthritis. Now, ironically, we do inject joints with steroid. It's not always the wrong thing to do, but it's a recognized complication that it can cause some deterioration of the joint. Sometimes the pros weigh out the cons, and we do these injections anyway. But in the area of Morton's neuroma, a good injection should result in minimal steroid entering the joint, obviously, or any entering the joint, unless there's something with the technique or unless there's a capsular tear where the uh, steroid can infiltrate through. So it's still worth bearing in mind, even though, strictly speaking, we're dealing with a nerve and not a joint. A more common uh, complication is actually a steroid flare. And this is really when um, the uh, body reacts to what's been injected. It could be the preservative, it could be the local, it could be the steroid. It's most likely to be the fact that the steroid is administered in crystalline form and these crystals can cause local irritation. And then you get a flare up because your body rejects these crystals and you get a lot of inflammation, which normally doesn't last two to three days. And this is actually quite a common complication from steroid injections, which I occasionally see in practice. The next uh, complication is trauma to the uh, plantar plate causing deformity of the toe. Now again, uh, one might think that that's not necessarily associated with a neuroma, but neuromas and plantar plate injury, which is where the capsule that keeps the fluid inside the joint uh, becomes torn, are closely associated in that you can easily present with both because excessive pressure causes the neuroma, but it can also cause this damage to the joint. And what happens is if you inject steroid around a neuroma, it can seep into a torn capsule and it can tear it and cause deformity. So the rule is if somebody's got a capsule of tear, you don't do a steroid injection unless for very exceptional circumstances. It's much better to treat the patient in other ways. And it's one of my view, one of the constant indications for doing a neuroma injection. So the next complication is infection. Um, now infection is actually pretty uncommon. I struggle to think in a 30 year career of a definitive infection caused by a steroid injection. Um, so I think you'd be very unlucky in the literature as well. It's considered to be uh, very uncommon. And uh, on the whole, it's less of a concern unless again, you're immunocompromised, in which case, of course, the risks slightly increase. So the next complication I have seen, uh, not in one of my own patients, but a patient came in with this complication and it's depigmentation along the lymphatic vessels. Now this is um, unusual, but it can happen uh, where the steroid tracks along the lymph vessels, which are very small vessels that are responsible for taking fluid back to the, to the heart. So um, when this happens, you see streaks and uh, discoloration, white, usually in color, almost like branching out like a tree. And this is uh, something that usually is temporary, although some of the deep pigmentation that happens as a result may last indefinitely. 
So I'd just like to talk a little bit now about the systemic uh, complications of steroid injections for Morton's neuroma. So the obvious one is an allergic response. Now, again, in a 30-year career, I have never seen a true allergic response to a steroid injection for Morton's neuroma. So it is exceptionally rare. It's not something to be overly concerned about. If somebody is very prone to allergy, uh, if perhaps they've had some negative effect from steroid previously, then definitely it's something you want to be very cautious about. And obviously you would discuss that with the practitioner in question. What I have seen occasionally, particularly if you're injecting several neuromas and the dose slightly goes up, is facial flushing. So this is basically when the patient feels a bit lightheaded and uh, they go red in their face. It's usually a temporary measure, but it is a temporary reaction. It's not usually serious. The patient is monitored, uh, but it does suggest that they've had a systemic effect uh, from, the, from the steroid. Another systemic effect is that steroid can cause an increase in blood sugar levels. Now, on the whole, that's not usually an issue, but obviously, if you are very insulin uh, resistant, if you're a diabetic, um, then these uh, situations become uh, more significant. So we are always cautious and warn patients, especially if they have poor diabetic control, that may not, steroid injection may not be the best thing for them and they may have some negative effect with regards to their, to their bloods. So that's a pretty thorough overview of the possible risks of complication from a steroid injection. I'd like to just finish by saying that on the whole, they are safe. On the whole, the reactions and the negative effects are uh, uncommon. Um, I do see the more significant complications I see when patients are injected and it causes capsular damage because the patient has this tear in their capsule that is exacerbated by the steroid injection. I've had quite a few patients over the years coming in saying, I had this steroid injection and now my toes have gone wonky and they've gone in the wrong direction and they're splayed. And that is a direct result in my view of the steroid injection. So that's one of the examples where I think it's more significant. Things like allergy, infection, yes, there are risks, but they are extremely small. Other complications which are a little bit more common, like for example, skin thinning and loss of padding usually only occur if patients have multiple injections. So the best thing is not to have multiple injections. Well, I hope this video has proven helpful both for my patients and uh, the public at large. And um, please do comment if you would like me to do any videos on other subject matter relating to Morton's neuroma.